Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshek. This is our daily NBA show. We have a new guest on our shows now. It's Troy West from AllPlaysWin.com. Troy West, thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks a lot, Peter. I'm, I'm really excited. I think it's a great time of year to be investing money in the NBA, and NBA playoffs are coming up quick. But great to be on the show. I think we got a lot of good advice to give out here. Well, you know, we know what you can do with uh, with football and with uh, with college basketball. Is NBA something that uh, that you've had uh, success with historically? We've been extremely successful in the NBA. People were very, very selective in the NBA. A lot of times you may only see one to two games sure, a week. Sure. But we've been outstanding in the NBA and really looking forward to the cream of the crop when the NBA playoffs roll around as well. All right, well, today is Wednesday, March 25th. And, yes, absolutely, NBA, you have to be selective. Uh, so, you know, give us as few picks as you want. But uh, we're going to get your thoughts in general on games. First thing I'm thinking about, you know, Denver is a home favorite over Philly. They're an 11 or 11.5 point favorite. But, uh, you know, Denver's gotten kind of a little bit of new life now with, with the new coach, right? Their last three home games, uh, they won by, uh, by 11 or more against better teams than Philly. Philly's coming off a of back-to-back where they got a, uh, you know, a uh, – uh, high scoring loss to the King. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a high line, but maybe Denver minus 11 might be one of those sneaky, good double digit favorite plays in the NBA that we do sometimes see. Yeah. It's an interesting line. You know, that high altitude, like you said, back to back games, and that's one of the tougher places to play in the NBA because of that high altitude seemed a little bit too high. I wasn't sure if Denver was worthy as an 11 and a half point favorite against any team in the NBA. I do know that they're playing better, but Philadelphia seems to be a little bit more competitive as of late. Last night, they did have the Kings for three and a half quarters. They collapsed. I think, like you said, Pete, it's going to really come down to fatigue in this game. Right. How fatigued will this young 76 or team be? But I think it's way too many points here. Not an official pick, but just seems a little bit of a high number for the Denver right, Nuggets. Right. Then also Houston and New Orleans is interesting. That one's about pick them right now. It's plus one or minus one. And New Orleans is super banged up, right? They got a lot of serious injuries, even Anthony Davis. I mean, he had a sprained ankle a few days ago. He seems like he's better now. But uh, they are definitely banged up. They covered their last game as a big underdog. Before that, they had lost four in a row. And Houston, generally a good team, generally a good bet against the spread. Four and one against spread over their last five. Eleven and five against spread over the last 16, and, um, you know, I'm thinking maybe uh, Houston uh, might be the play here. Well, I, I, you know, I have this one circle, Pete. Dwight Howard makes his return tonight, and mm -hmm. I think that's going to be a, a big key in this game. How will Houston gel? They've been playing outstanding without Dwight Howard. Right. Will they play better with him, or will they take a little bit of a setback? Yes. And, and then how many minutes does Dwight Howard get? I think that's a big role in this one. I typically like to stay away from games when they're getting a key player back yes, for the yes. first time because you really don't know what they're going to do with the lineup. But on paper, Houston looks like a good bet. Right, and then the other one I want to ask you about is Miami-Boston, right? Now, Miami had a big meltdown in the fourth quarter last night, and they're going up against Boston. And Boston, a little bit maybe under the radar, has been a very strong ATS team for a long time now. They're 7-2 and two against spread over the last night and 23-8-1 and one against the spread over the last 32. So I'm always kind of looking to bet on Boston in general. Uh, they were 4 on the overnight. Now they're minus 5.5. So that is kind of a high line. And a lot of times in the NBA, these teams, when they do have a meltdown like that on a back-to-back, -back, do bounce back the next day. Miami does have some talent, but uh, Whiteside might be out. And just in general, not sure what to make of Miami in terms of their uh, mentality for this game. And going up against a team like Boston has been clearly undervalued for, for an extended period of time. What's your take on that game, uh, Boston minus 5.5? It's a tricky one, right? Yeah, it's a tricky line without a doubt, Pete. I think this is going to be a competitive basketball game. You know, Miami, absolute heartbreaking loss last mm -hmm. night, losing at buzzer and just a fluky, fluky basketball game against the Milwaukee Bucks. How will they bounce back? Are they fatigued as well? As how draining was that game? But Miami's playing a lot better with the addition of Gordon Dragic. They've played a lot better basketball. Hard to go against Miami. I think in the end, this is going to be a competitive game. Five seems a little bit too high. Right. No official pick, but I think it's just going to be a competitive basketball game. Two teams fighting for the playoffs. All right. I love what you're having to say about these games. And the last one I want to ask you about before we get to the picks is the Lakers and Minnesota, right? Two of the worst teams in the NBA playing up against each other. And they're also both teams that are loaded with, with a ton of youngsters who are just getting playing time to sort of fuel them out. So I feel like that's a situation where you could have some, uh, some value one way or the other. The Lakers are in a back-to-back, -back, but they did rest Hill and Boozer, who are probably, I guess, going to play in this one. But, uh, you know, a lot of those Lakers guys played 30 or 40 minutes yesterday. And uh, Minnesota, they do have some youngsters. Maybe they've been hitting the wall. But, you know, at home, minus one and a half. Lakers, not a good team either on a back-to-back. -back. Is Minnesota minus one and a half maybe a sneaky under the, under the uh, radar play tonight? You know, Pete, I actually have this one circled as an official play. I do, oh, like really? the Timberwolves. do like the Timberwolves in this one. Like you said, seems two pretty evenly matched teams, two horrible teams to say the least. And I hate <laughs> betting 
for basketball teams, but you got to give the edge to the home team, Pete. And like you said, Lakers playing back to back. Minnesota's kind of a tricky place to play at times, kind of a tricky gym. I got to go with the Timberwolves. Like you said, those young legs going up against yeah. the Lakers and the back to back situation. I like the home team in games like this. All right. Thanks so much for your thoughts, Troy West. Now let's move on to the picks. 